After we explored some information about MPLS definition and its architecture and how MPLS works, let's head to the lab now to configure an MPLS network. Upon completing this lab, you will be able to configure OSPF as an IGP in the MPLS network and configure MPLS and LDP. We have four routers in the MPLS network to be configured in this lab, P1, P2, P1, and P2. We have four configuration tasks to be finished in this lab. One, configure MPLS LSR ID. Two, configure MPLS and LDP globally. Three, configure OSPF. Four, configure MPLS LDP on interfaces of MPLS network. With the configuration tasks on PE1, right click on PE1, then choose CLI to get to the CLI of PE1. Then we will check the configuration of interface loopback 0. Here we have 1.1.1.1 as loopback 0. We will configure it as the MPLS LSR ID of this router. So we go to system view and we run command MPLS LSR ID, then the IP address 1.1.1.1. Enter. Now it's time to configure and enable MPLS and LDB globally on the interface. So we run command MPLS, MPLS starting, please wait, and then it stated that it's okay. Now it's enabled and MPLS LDP. We have to quit first from the MPLS view, then we configure MPLS LDP. So now we have MPLS and LDP is enabled globally plus configuring PE1 with the MPLS LSR ID. So it's now time to configure and enable OSPF as an IGP in the MPLS uh, uh, router of PE1 to advertise its MPLS LSR ID. So to configure OSPF, we add the OSPF process, OSPF1 in area 0. Then here we have to define the uh, network addresses of the interfaces. We can disable the traps appears here in order to be clearly configuring uh, the commands using undo undo terminal trapping then we go back again to system view ospf1 area 0 then it's time to specify the interfaces on which the ospf will be working here so we can run command display IP interface brief to check the IP interfaces of PE1. We have uh, giga Ethernet interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 and 1. And also we have uh, loopback 0. Loopback 0 has to be enabled on the OSPF in order to be able to advertise the MPLS LSR ID of PE1. Plus we have to enable the uh, OSPF on the MPLS interfaces. Here we have the MPLS interfaces are 0 slash 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 0 slash 1. 0 slash 0 slash 2, which is connected to CE1, is not an MPLS interface. And same also for interface 3. So we have interface 2 and 3 are not MPLS interfaces and will not be included in the OSPF configuration. So we have to take the IP addresses of interface 0 and interface 1. So to define them on the OSPF, on the OSPF process, we will add network 10.11.11.1, then the wildcard mask 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0, .0 and 
network 10.21.1.0.0.0.0 and finally network and specify 1.1.1.1 which is the MPLS LSR ID sorry I missed the wildcard mask so now I can check on the configuration added for the OSPF from the OSPF view I can run command display this it will display OSPF1 this is a process ID and the area which is area 0 then the three added interfaces uh, for the OSPF so for now I have added the OSPF configuration now it's time to enable MPLS and LDB on the MPLS interfaces the MPLS interfaces as we said it's interface 0 and interface 1 so we have to head to interface giga ethernet interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 then we run command MPLS this is to enable MPLS and then we have to enable LDP to be run on the interface and we repeat these commands on interface 1 MPLS MPLS LDP then quit from the system view and run save command to save the applied changes now I have finished the uh, configuration on PE1 to enable MPLS LSR ID, MPLS, MPLS LDB and to enable MPLS and LDB on the MPLS interfaces of PE1. So now I will go to the other routers to make same changes done for PE1. I have here a script I can change only the parameters that uh, need to be added for each router like here we have MPLS LSR ID it must be changed on uh, P1 we can check on the loopback interface display current configuration interface loopback 0 we have here 2.2.2.2 at the, at the MPLS LSR ID And MPLS, MPLS LDB, no change here, no parameters to be added. So I will take this section, copy it, and apply on the system view. I have to check that I'm in the system view of P1. Then choose paste. And now it's time to enable the OSPF as well. Display. Quit, undo, terminal trapping to stop the trapping. Then we go back again to the system view. And it's time to uh, configure the OSPF. We have here, we can check on the MPLS interfaces. Here we have three MPLS interfaces. Now I'm on the core router, which is P1. This is P1. It has three interfaces. I'm going to configure all the three interfaces with OSPF and MPLS, MPLS LDB. So we can change the script here and copy network two in the OSPF configuration and then I can check the IPs on the MPLS interfaces this is this is the first one this 
this is a second one. And this is the third one. I think I have missed the first one, which is 10.11.11.2. .11 Then I'm going to copy the OSPF section and paste on the system view of P1. Finally, here we have uh, some information uh, states that the OSPF NIPO relationship is created and we expect that because we already configured before the interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 on PE1, which is connected to P1. Now we have added the OSPF for interface 0 of P1, so there must be OSPF peer relationship uh, to form between PE1 and P1. We can make sure that the OSPF is okay by running command display OSPF peer. Here we have already a peer formed, and this peer uh, is on uh, Giga Ethernet interface 0 slash 0 slash 0, which is here. So now it's time to uh, enable MPLS and LDB on the MPLS interfaces. We have here three interfaces, as we said before 0 slash 0 slash 0 and 1 and 2. So I can take these interfaces, but after adding interface 2, MPLS LDB, then I'm going to take all these interfaces and paste them in the system view of P1. Then we can save. Now let's get back again to PE1. We can make sure that MPLS LDB is established. We can run command MPLS LDB here. So it states that we have one peer found which is with 2.2.2.2 which is the LSR ID of P1 and this peer is here on interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 from PE1. So now we have configured MPLS LDB successfully between PE1 and P1. The same configuration process we did before for PE2 and P2 offline with myself in order to save time. We can go to PE2 and check the configuration are added successfully and peers are formed. We can check on the OSPF peer, display OSPF peer. Here we have three or two, sorry, two peers are formed on PE2 and that is expected which are P1 as a peer for P2 on interface 0 and P2 as a peer on interface 1. We can also go to P2 and check the LDB peer, display MPLS LDB peer. Here P2 has three peers formed. P2 has three peers 
P1, P1, and P2. So now configuration are all fine and verified. So now we can check on the LSP buffers and make sure that they are created properly by LDB. For example, on PE1, we run command display MPLS LSP to show the LSP information on this router. We have here different entries for the different MPLS LSR IDs existing on the lab, and we have the in and out level, in and out interface. As a summary to what we did in the lab, first we enabled MPLS and LDB globally from the system view. First we configured MPLS LSR ID loopback 0, MPLS and MPLS LDB. All of these commands were done on the global mode which is system view. Secondly, we configure IGB, which is OSPF on the MPLS network. From the system view, we added the OSPF process, then area zero, then we defined the interfaces on which the MPLS will operate. Finally, we enabled MPLS and LDB on interfaces. From the system view, we specified each interface we need the MPLS and LDB to work on and we added two commands on the interface view MPLS and MPLS LDB